we've had a quite a big landslide that's come down and um, blocked a river so the river can't get through so it's formed a lake upstream of the dam and it's causing all sorts of problems for the locals because it's closed the road they can't get access along the road to the properties anymore and the water has gone up into some buildings and wool sheds and the farmers have had to move all the stock out of the floodplain. And when, a, when the landslide comes down and blocks a river one of two things can happen it can the landslide dam can either stay there for a very long time and just cause a lake upstream that can stay in the landscape for hundreds of thousands of years or if the landside dam is unstable or if the river can move the material then there's quite a high likelihood that the dam will fail which would send um, a huge flood it could be catastrophic so as soon as we heard that there was a landside dam we got over there to check it out um, to make some make some measurements and assess the situation to see whether the the landside dam could fail rapidly and send a big flood downstream. During a geonet landslide response, we can use unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to rapidly collect lots and lots of high resolution images of the entire area that's affected by the landslide and the dam. So on the screen here, we can see all the hundreds of photos that we took out in the field with the UAV and these then get stitched together into one mega photo that covers the entire area. So this is what we call a digital surface model which basically quantifies that information for us which we can then use to compare it with what the landscape used to look like before the landslide happened. Blues and greens are areas where the surface has got lower, so that's where the material has been eroded and fallen down the slope, and areas of yellows, oranges and reds are where that material has been deposited. We can use that data to calculate volumes of the landslide dam, as well as the volume of the lake that's building up behind the landslide dam. The problem with landslide dams is the, the lake that forms behind them and the speed in which that lake fills. And if it fills quickly and the dam overtops, which many do, then it can cause a major hazard. And the problem with dam breaches is that all of that debris comes as a big pulse that travels down the river and it can go very quickly and it can cover uh, large areas and some of them fail with little or no warning. Typically dams that are formed of big boulders that are the size of buses and cars, um, they may survive for longer on the landscape because the water when it comes over the top of them can't erode through. Now compare those to other dams where we have very fine particles and the water can easily erode through. And so what we have to do is get an understanding of that material because the failure mode of the dam is influenced by that material. Initially the landside dam blocked the entire river, so it blocked all the water from going through. So within about a week the river had eroded a little channel around the toe and it was starting to cut down through that material because it was quite weak. We noticed that there was some little cracks or slumps forming on the downstream face of the dam and we could also see water coming through the dam, so um, through flow or piping, which means there's a possibility that the water could erode through the middle of the dam as well. So we had lots of warning bells going off in our heads that um, there's a possibility that the dam could go pretty soon. We then have to take a precautionary approach and say well okay if the dam were to fail by overtopping which most dams do then what's the likely discharge and the discharge is the volume of water and debris that could be released per second down the, 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 the river and, and to do that we use past dam failures and where we've got data and so this work we're doing now is going to add another data set to that body of knowledge that we've collated from all over the world. Um, so about two weeks after the landside dam formed we had a rainy day in the Wairapa. It was enough to bring the lake level up to the same level as the top of the dam um, and as soon as it reached the top of the dam it was eroded 
Within about an hour and a half, most of the water from the lake had been emptied out. We estimate that the maximum discharge, so that's the flow of water when the dam collapsed, was about 900 cumics, which is a massive flood. The, um, the 100 year flood for the Kaifata River is expected to be about 15 cumics, and this was 900, so it was off the scale. So w when we initially go to a dam that's formed, and we're assessing how it's likely to fail. We don't have the ability to get into the dam material because it's a, a you know emergency em environment. Um, so what we do is we do a simple appraisal of the source where the debris come from and the shape of the dam and the materials exposed on the surface of the dam to try to understand how you know what the materials are like, how big the particles are. After it's failed, then one of the things we do is we then go back into the, the dam and we, we sieve the material. And you can see that what we do is we set up a crucible with some sieves and we systematically sieve the core material of, of the dam. And this helps us to refine the models. Now that we've got all this data, we can rerun the models of the flood outburst and train the model so that it fits with the actual flood extent downstream. It's very rare to capture the kind of data that we've got. We have this unique data set where we have the lake level and we have the outflow when the dam breached. We've got the geometry of the dam from the actual um, change modelling and the, and the drone surveys and laser surveys. We also have the particle size distribution and we also have the area that the flood inundated because we've mapped the, the trash lines. So we put all of that into our model and we back analyse how, how the flood occurred by using all of that information to control the model parameters that we use. What we want to do is we want to put all that information with our other data sets from around New Zealand and from overseas so that we can produce these different models and forecast tools that will help the emergency managers in the future.